In today's video, we are going to be talking about maximizing your possibilities in online dating. And you might find this a little strange when we get to the end of it, because I am going to challenge you about what maximizing your opportunities are and give you a different perspective on what will actually give you the best and maximum outcome for your time online. So who am I to talk about this? I'm Coach Paula Grooms, a dating and relationship coach, licensed social worker, and author of the book, Why Won't He Commit? How a Man Decides to Make You the One. There is a lot of talk now after Logan Yuri's book, How Not to Die Alone, which has an ominous title, but she is an online dating expert and I really like all of her concepts in the book. And it is a great thing for you to be thinking about when maximizing your opportunities online and how you do it. I'm gonna go into a little more of the nuance of it vis-a-vis -vis your age, station in life, etc. I pulled up an article from Psychologist World and the, um, the article looks like this. Uh, it's really timeless because all it is is about maximizers versus satisfiers or satisficers as the psychologist who coined this phrase that combined satisfying and sacrificing, which is a word that really sends so many of us when we think about dating relationships, a partner, what am I going to sacrifice? And the truth is that whenever we make a choice, we sacrifice the choice that we didn't make. No one gives us everything. There is no perfect partner. And if you are a maximizer, you may very well be damaging your possibilities of success in the relationship area. And we see this in society that a man or woman will just keep dating, pursuing the perfect situation rather than taking stock of what is a real possibility and what isn't. And so I want to read you from this article a bit because I think it really points up this idea and will make it crystal clear for you. And then we want to talk about where you are in your particular unique dating journey and what you do about this if you are a maximizer and if that is hurting your chances of finding fulfilling love. Psychologists have found that people's approaches to decision making fall into one of two categories, either maximizing or satisfying or satisficing. Given that maximizers task themselves with making the most informed, intelligent decisions, we might expect them to be the ones that prevail and do best. But in dating, this can really lead to some negative behaviors that feed on themselves. Continuing to pursue something else that will be better. And in the book I mentioned, Logan Yuri's How Not to Die Alone, she discusses it in terms of finding a benchmark. And there actually is a, a mathematical equation about finding a benchmark. I like to think of it simply as you want to take stock of age and station in life to make the best decision for you. For example, if you know that you want to be married and have children of your own, you must make decisions before certainly 40 is the best, if not before, for the maximum chance of you getting what you desire. So that is going to be very different than if you have had your children already, where you don't have any of those types of really pressing constraints on you. So the benchmark idea I will go into in a moment, but I just wanted to finish this because it is really the salient point of this video. The satisficing concept 
was first proposed by the U.S. Nobel Prize winning economist Herbert A. Simon, and they tell who he is. Simon believed that when satisficers are presented with a decision to make, they will consider what they want to gain or preserve from a situation, then evaluate their options to find the solution that meets those requirements. So think about that. What do you want to gain under what I'm going to expound on here, which is what do you also have to lose? For example, if you want to marry and have children of your own, what are you going to lose if you continue to have the idea of pursuit, pursuit, pursuit of something that is perfection rather than something that will ultimately satisfy you. And there is a lot of research that can help you think about this. When online we are presented with a flat, non-3D, non-pheromone environment of a man's picture, that is all. And the unfortunate thing is that that takes away so much of the nuance of a person as to really make them flat. And so the criteria of just a visual in picking a possible person that will actually really satisfy you and fulfill you in life with all that you're thinking about and desiring will go by the wayside and you may swipe left. And this is a very sad fact of online dating. Also, we know that more choice for people tends to restrict their decision-making abilities. So we don't want you to be in either of those categories. Well, what do we do? Because it is in us innately to either like a man's photo and a little of what he has in a profile, but let's really be honest about it. It's typically the photo. And think about it. Even the most beautiful of actresses that we think about in our world, Cameron Diaz, Jennifer Aniston, Halle Berry, actually those three that I just mentioned out of hundreds are not supermodels. And they actually will not do as well as a supermodel in a still photo. But again, they are beautiful women. But what makes them really beautiful? Because I know thousands of women who are equally as beautiful as Jennifer Aniston. Absolutely there are. But what makes them unique is their essence, humor, their intelligence perhaps. And that is what draws us to them on the screen. We are taking that away from ourselves when we are looking at a criteria of looks on a flat, non-3D basis when we are looking at photos. So I urge you to go deeper to perhaps get something more satisfying. And in my One Love course, Online to Never Ending Love, Seven Simple Steps to Digital Dating Success, I actually go into how very quickly you get to the point of talking to that man offline, because again, texting is flat. And typically, unless he's very funny by chance, you're not going to get any feeling from online. And as you know, when I talk about texting back and forth on an app or in text, it is going to fall flat. You have no basis to start a conversation other than the fact that you've both been online. And I give tips on this so that you can get to hear his voice, which will be another either seductive thing for you or an outright no. Because in my course, I do not want you to waste any time. You want to get to what it is that you're looking for, not a lot of dates. You want quality and real potential in them. There's a lot to this, but you know, it seems like in society, everybody's just, okay, go online and swipe and see what happens. I call it the wild west of dating because there is no long-term 
historical way that people have dated for centuries and really even our modern dating world before online dating was not very long. Really, before 1880, people were just relegated to their five mile radius, if that, in order to pick a mate. There was no dating in the way that it is perceived by us to be natural and long-term of a man going up to a woman out at a bar, at a restaurant, supermarket, it doesn't matter. It really did not exist prior to a big invention that is said to change the dating world. Oddly enough, that is the bicycle because men no longer had to take their horse and could actually go to neighboring towns on a bicycle and that's it started it all. And then of course the car came into play shortly thereafter. The point is that you want to maximize your potential online by being a bit more of a satisficer. This is not to say that you cannot get what you want. I am here to help you be fulfilled in a long-term loving, committed relationship. And what we do know too, is that when there is just some attraction that can build and build and build, and we tend not to then look at someone's looks down the road in a relationship as being much of a factor at all. It's where we want to go and end in a long-term committed forever relationship that we want to then go backwards and say, well, if that's the issue in a long-term committed relationship, that there really isn't anything, but yet at the start of it, we're doing it, well, then something is a bit off. I don't want you to sacrifice totally, but I don't also want you to maximize totally. And that's where the word satisficing comes in. I love it. I like this article. I like the concept. And especially if you are at a place in your life where you know you want to marry and have children, you want to be looking at a man's values, character, desire to have what you want in life. And you can do this by being a bit more open to the realities and decide for yourself by what I call scaling a man when you are looking at your app, going to swipe right or left, say to yourself, when looking at that still photo, I bet there is something interesting about him. Just saying, I bet there is something interesting about him that I would like to find out. That actually opens up your mind and can prompt you to move to the next step. And again, seven simple steps to digital dating success. My one love course online to never ending love can help you because it really is seven simple steps. It's a formula that can get you all that you desire and deserve. That's what I'm about. I hope this was helpful today. Hit that red alert bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos and I will see you next time. Leave your comments below and I strive to answer each and every one of them. I love hearing from you. Give this a like if you do. It helps me immensely and I will see you next time.